Are you an Etsy seller doing print on demand? Or are you thinking about starting print on demand? In today's video, we are going to fix your print on demand stores. And yes, I'm actually diving into your real shops and we're going to fix them. You've been submitting your shops for a critique here in the YouTube comments, and we have chosen a large number of your stores to critique today. And I'm going to highlight these fixes as 10 big changes that you can make in your print on demand shop today. So before I begin, if you're new here, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I'm an Etsy seller of seven years. I've sold over $1.5 million in revenue on the platform and that's over a million dollars in profit. And now I teach over 1400 Etsy sellers just like you how to scale their businesses. Now my background is corporate e-commerce and I worked for big companies like Zappos and Zulily and I've really infused those business principles into all of my teachings. So now let's infuse those principles into your print on demand shops. If you like this video, I want you to stop and and subscribe. So hit subscribe because it will encourage me to make more videos just like this one. And also go down and put in the comments your Etsy shop name. This is only if you want me to help you with it and critique it. If you don't want me to look at your shop, don't put it there. But if you do, go ahead and leave it down below. All right, the first shop, 78 sales. My big takeaway is that there's not a cohesive aesthetic or customer. We have such a mix of items in here from teacher items, 4th of July items to beach items to Halloween items, dog outfits, Christmas wish lists, Christian journals, very much a mix. This person, she could literally have all of these types of items in the same shop and it would look amazing if the aesthetic was way different. And if you look at the top, pink aster creations, like we really want to have your best selling items featured in your banner so that people know what you are known for. And this right now, the banner does not at all represent what she wants to be known for. Creating special gifts for special times way too generic, custom items, apparel, home decor, and more. You don't want to even be writing out your list of items in there. Not the appropriate place to do that. That's what section titles are for. We really need to work on the branding and cohesion here. So that's what I would work with this person on. I would want to dive into her customer. She can have multiple in the same shop and then the aesthetic. And I have a Pinterest activity. It's like an activity for you as an Etsy seller to really help curate a solid aesthetic. If that's not intuitive to you to create something like that, we have a Pinterest activity that we could do together. Also, a couple more things before we leave her is that her mock-ups, we cannot tell if these are t-shirts or sweatshirts. It's not clear what they are based on the mock-ups. And with these mock-ups, it's way too much consistency, I would say. Other things are the wording on a lot of the designs is way too small for anyone to read. On mobile, which is really where most people are shopping, if you notice in your traffic, the Etsy app, a lot of this isn't gonna be visible. So for example, create your own mug with your text, photos, logo, etc. Just put your design or customize design or custom design or custom logo. You don't have to have a full like sentence there. Same thing with some of the wall art. It's a really big piece of art, but tiny, tiny scripted words. So you can't really tell what that verse is. Just some recommendations here. She also is missing that announcement. Definitely need the announcement. And then SEO, a lot of changes to be made with the SEO, the site merchandising aspects of the shop also need SEO included. Okay, next shop. I think my number one call out is the branding. And I kind of call this like dollar store branding or like even like Chinatown branding because as in goods, I have no idea what you're known for. It almost feels like they could be selling like knockoff purses or something. We need to really hammer out who we're targeting here with our branding. A couple things with creating trust, especially with a banner like that and a logo like that, you really need to establish some sort of trust because the branding isn't establishing trust. Bobby, whoever Bobby is, needs to have some kind of picture there. Even if it's like an AI generated picture, this is really interesting the way that the sections have have been created just because t-shirts, Gildan 5000, t-shirts, Bell and Canvas, like it's interesting. And I don't think that this is working for his SEO. This is a place where you really need to have your SEO dialed in. All right, another thing I'm noticing here is that they have 98 Tumblr wrap downloads, but then they also are selling 50 of the actual Tumblrs because there's such a mix of other types of products. It's not only Tumblr focused. I would not put them in the same shop. I think these are very different customers. Also a lot this person should do with the SEO. This this guy would really benefit from our framework, the seven types of products to have in your shop, where we have different listings with different purposes that drive up order number and revenue at the same time. I'm almost wondering if they put Tumblr wraps in there to be a loss leader. Kind of feels like maybe that was the intention. I see they have stickers and that's, I think, a much better loss leader for a shop like this. I would get those Tumblr wraps, move them out of here. All right, moving on to the next shop. This definitely has potential. There is still a lot of work. And if they keep creating their listings in this way, they're probably 
not gonna get sales. It's the type of situation where they'd probably get maybe like 20 sales in six months type of thing. But I can tell this person has a good eye. It's easier to teach strategies than it is to teach design. I actually really like your banner, but shop name SEO is really missing. I think the SEO is really killing their traffic. This is like the number one thing I'd wanna overhaul. If this person was in my program, I would say, put your listings into our coaching group. Let us help you with the SEO because that will be a game changer. I think she would see results within a few weeks if she updated the SEO. There's so many places you need to have your SEO. It's not a title. People think, oh, I, I fixed the SEO and they just like updated the title. But that just means now their SEO is completely broken and not consistent. It's not gonna have full power. Also, I would caution people against only relying on AI generated images. People can start to tell that it's AI generated. So I would recommend having a mix of AI and real people with your mockups. Overall, she's also started really with just t-shirts. The framework, the seven types of products would really help her. We need to get different listings with different purposes, something like a loss leader, that's one of the seven types. It'll really drive up her order number sky high. Not gonna lose money on it, but it will help with that. That and then something to drive up average order value. T-shirts, it's not gonna pay their mortgage, right? Especially with 30, what, 31 listings. So we need to get her average order value up. There are print on demand items that you can do that will drive up AOV or print on demand items that are notoriously purchased in high, high, large quantities that also drive up your average order value. All right, the next one, got a lot of work to do with the branding piece, empowerment clothing. Looking at the banner, I have no clue what to expect. This is kind of a fun game to play actually. Look at the banner and guess what they sell. That would be a fun video. Looking just at the banner, I would expect like, okay, women in their 60s who kind of like geometric prints on their kind of flowy shirts, kind of like tunics and like three quarter length sleeves and like earrings that are kind of geometric shapes. Then you scroll down and it's totally different. I think there's a disconnect with the branding elements and the product. Also listings and no sales. A little bit difficult to tell what's going on because there's no about section. There's very little helpful information here. It looks like maybe a chat GPT announcement. We definitely want key important information in your announcement. Turnaround time. How often do you come up with new products? What are your best sellers? Or what do you think will become your best sellers, right? Links to sections, links to social media. And then there's no about section. So luckily, like it says San Diego, California. So that feels like super safe to purchase from, right? No idea who they are, what's going on, what the backstory is of the shop, shop owner, what the history is. And also shop policies, totally missing. So right now they're not gonna be covered for any type of a case. I think the number one thing to work on is the designs. Like for example, the mug, right? They can't see the full picture of what's on that design. You can't even see all the words. You don't know what it spells. You just have to guess. Phone cases, right? Mockups, you don't wanna have just a white background. That's much more of an Amazon style of listing photo. You wanna have more lifestyle images for your mockups. I don't think all the listings have been assigned to sections yet. So that's a missed opportunity for those listings to get found. With the t-shirts, way too many items to have in a section. I would say max like 50 to 75 items in a section maximum. So 157 items in one section, that's five pages. No way someone's gonna scroll through all of those. If I'm looking at the custom sort, I'm assuming this is what they did intentionally. They, this is what they want people to see first. I'm seeing like the guy shirts, a lot of the same mock-ups. And I think, you know, my wife appreciates me in different fonts. My girlfriend appreciates me in different fonts, different colors. I would not go that hard and aggressive in duplicating listings, repackaging, retargeting at this point, because we have no proof of concept. I would say maximum two times with one type of design like that. Also the designs themselves, I do think font choice is something that we could work on. Um, also with like a dark gray like that, black does not have the highest contrast against that. I'm noticing a lot of the dark gray with black on it and it just doesn't pop very well. Most people, especially for these products, are gonna be purchasing and shopping through the app. So tiny, tiny little thumbnail. It's gonna be hard to get that person to stop and look and catch their attention with this level of contrast. I would take a look at what is really trending, like for example, pink, right, with Barbie. One of my students said, pink is having a moment and it is, I would definitely get beyond these basic colored mock-ups. Also a lot of generic sayings here. Never give up, be kind, the best is yet to come believe in yourself, do your best, work hard, be awesome, choose happy. We really wanna focus on having more spicy designs, right? Cause what's gonna stop someone from just going to Walmart and picking up a shirt like that? So they could find that, you know, Walmart, TJ Maxx, Target, like anywhere. A $30 t-shirt on Etsy, they're gonna wait a week or longer to receive it. There's gotta be some other reason that they want 
the shirt. The design has to be there. They're not buying the shirt for the quality. They're not buying it because it's soft. They're buying it because of the design and the aesthetic. So I'd say with 292 listings, a lot of it is fat that I would just cut out. And then I would work on product types because it's way too overloaded with t-shirts. I would actually completely stop making t-shirts if this was my shop. Here's one, mom on trends and co. One thing is if you want to sell items that are actually trending, I would make sure not to have the word trend in your shop name. Cause honestly, it's almost become like a giveaway and says like, oh, these items are actually not trending. People who are looking for trending items will not shop in a store that says the trendy shop, right? It might attract people who are slower to adopt trends. You know, maybe people who are like five years behind what's actually currently trending. For the people who really want cutting edge trends, that would repel them. We also have SEO issues. I would guess that their traffic is really low. There's so much they need to do with their long tail keywords. They would probably see results within a few weeks. Also with the yeah, description, so much missing here. So we want to optimize these descriptions for mobile because that's where people are going to be shopping for the most part. And the SEO is missing from that. And then 10 types of listing photos. We really need to fill this out. We want photos linked to variation. So when someone clicks light blue, they see light blue. Also the pricing strategies, I would update that. Right now with 26 sales, we don't have the luxury of charging full price yet. I would do a pretty aggressive strategy until she has 20 orders for every single listing, 244 items in the shop would be over 4,000 sales. So I would be maintaining the strategy for that long. Mockups are another big thing that I would focus on with this shop. They're starting to look a little AI generated here. You can tell the difference, the softness of the skin and just the background completely blurred. There's some unique spicy sayings in here, right? Paid in full. I talk in movie quotes. A mother is your first best friend. Then there's a lot of more vanilla stuff like love, mama, girl mom, the best mom, grace. I would spice up the creativity level on the designs, update the mockups, implement a pricing strategy, and really consider who they're selling to. Maybe potentially change the shop name and then the branding elements. Because right now, if you look at the top, if you play that game, what are they known for by looking at their banner? Mom on Trends and Co. That's where there's a lot of updating to be done. But they have a lot of listings to work with. And there's probably about 30% of the listings that could be trimmed out. All right, next one. Definitely want to fix the banner. Now, I love that they have like a cross on all their items, but 380 84 listings with 15 sales. I think there's a lot of fat to be trimmed out of here. And then the mock-ups are something I would really work on. Also with the section titles, SEO really matters. Now they're going with long tail keywords, but it's just maybe not necessarily long tail keywords that people are searching. So like Jesus themed what, right? Dad themed products, dad themed what? It's just not working for them as well as it could be. I would also be utilizing custom sort in a different way. Okay, here we got some ornaments, mm, mugs. I would definitely start Stop with all the t-shirts and instead of hoodies, I would do crew necks. I would do crew necks and comfort color. The Pinterest curation activity that we do would be helpful for this just because it's so much going on. It's turning into a general store. And I think that going from a more trending aesthetic would help the shop quite a bit. And I would probably remove 30% of the listings from it and just trim the fat, especially if maybe some of these are earlier designs that aren't quite at the level or the caliber that they, that they wanna be at right now. And then I would change out the logo too. And Announcement, we don't want to have like, hello, come on in and take a look around. The announcement isn't where you write what you would say if you had a store. The announcement is what you want to catch people's attention and, and give them the key important, most important, valuable information. It's not the friendly neighborhood like, hello, welcome, come on in. It's the, I ship in two business days, free shipping worldwide, sizes extra small to, you know, 10X or something like that. Linking to really important information. All right, this shop is very interesting. I would would 100% change out the banner. I think the background color is really distracting from a lot of what's going on here. I would change out the logo as well. I would probably take her picture of herself out of the banner too and just have it be really focused on product. And I think with this shop, I'm seeing a theme of overlays. We see a lot of these written in this kind of similar font. It's a lot of words and they're kind of saying the same thing. So personalized dispatcher tote and shift bag for dispatchers. Well, sometimes being more concise is more powerful Powerful, and I would probably redo the way we're doing overlays. I would create a special background for the overlays, whether it be like a rectangular tag that's flying out or even a bubble with a solid color background. We're getting quite a meshed aesthetic going on with the police items plus rainbow wall art plus Tibetan terrier stuff. It's just such a mix. It's kind of something that people would have to like dig through. I don't think it would have a lot of like multi-item orders. Maybe the dispatcher gifts 
since that seems to be the majority of their product mix. But for the rest of it, which is a little more than half of their product mix, I don't think they're attracting the right type of customer. What customer types are parallel or have some overlap with the 911 dispatcher? Serve them. But I would not be adding in a bunch of like gnome stuff or like dog breed stuff, LGBTQ stuff. I would not be doing that in this shop. All right, this one, Project Happy Home, choose joy and bring a book. Let's play the game. What are they selling based on the banner? I'm guessing that they sell vintage books and wall art, maybe. Okay, what do we have? We have shower curtains. I never would have guessed. And Halloween shirts and homeschool stuff. This is not at all what I would have expected by the banner. I would tighten up this entire shop. The product mix, make it more cohesive. I would do the Pinterest activity with this person just to really help them narrow the focus in a little bit more. Sometimes it's easier to design things if you have boundaries, even if you create those boundaries for yourself. So having like Rapunzel tapestry next to like the periodic table mouse pad, I just feel like it's not quite jiving. I would work on the um, aesthetic with them. Now this one is interesting. They have a hundred listings and no sales. I feel like they are going for quantity perhaps over quality. I think the key here for this shop would be getting these images on different items. Wall art can be tough if you only limit yourself to wall art. You know with that it's not very giftable. If they were to put these images on other types of items, even print on demand items, I feel like they would do a lot better. I would create some calendar right? They could curate these images, wallpaper, wrapping paper, especially like these butterflies and this like botanical print, the mushroom print. I see they've actually gone into the notebooks, which is interesting. Notebooks are a lot easier to sell if they're personalized. The price point for the notebooks based on what they're getting, I don't know that I would have gone notebooks. I see they tried to go mugs. It's difficult to personalize any of this to add a name or a date or, or something. I would probably go the route of wrapping paper, wallpaper, stickers, even like phone backgrounds, like digital phone backgrounds. And they desperately need some loss leaders in the mix. So looking at the shop, their cheapest thing is $12. And that's the thing I would be focusing on loss leaders for the next month if I was the shop. All right, the next one, so much we should do here. Now, some of these mock-ups are good where they're holding it and the design is forward facing. They gotta be really careful with some of this that is Disney inspired. I would totally disable those until they get different mock-ups in place. I would also be integrating some male mock-ups, some female mock-ups, maybe some older people mock-ups, even some like younger people like in their 20s mock-ups to really be more targeted towards the end user, not the customer, the end user, because this is a very giftable item. So if you are buying a mug for your big burly outdoor husband guy, you're not gonna wanna have some boho girl sitting on a bed with like feathers in her hair holding it. You can't picture giving that to your husband as easily. So you're want to have a guy with like man hands holding that mug, right? Mugs are great gifts for grandparents. So maybe having like an older lady or gentleman holding it could make it an easier translation. If you're going to focus your shop entirely on mugs, don't know that I recommend doing, but if you, if you really are sold on doing that, then I would make sure you have segments of who you're targeting within that. All right, final one, curious studio finds, unique studio style. I would completely change the shop name, creative, interesting, fun, and a little bit curious, completely missing the SEO. I would completely change the banner, the shop name, that shop title. And then I would be working on the mock-up. So it's all this dark gray wood background and then zoomed in so much on some of these shirts that I can't tell if they're a hoodie or a crew neck. It looks like a lot of these mock-ups are the free ones as well as just things with white backgrounds. Update all the mock-ups before creating any more listings because it's gonna be so much easier to update her mock-ups when she only has 117 versus doing it when she has like 600 listings. Last but not least, she has good reviews, so she could be including a lot of these reviews within her listings and leveraging that. But mock-ups, designs, branding, what do they want to be known for? Who are they selling to? These are all questions that we would want to really nail down with the shop owner to help them scale in a sustainable way. In conclusion, if your shop is missing a focused customer or a focused aesthetic that serves multiple customers, if it has design components that are missing or it's too vanilla or the pricing strategy is not in place, 
place. It's gonna be really hard to get traction if you're missing all of these things together. Sometimes I have seen print-on-demand shops do okay when they are missing one or two elements. And sometimes people come into my program and start working with us and we recommend just starting a new shop because it's gonna be faster that way and we want you to get results fast. I would take a look at your shop, look at what you learned today from watching these critiques and maybe evaluate if it's time to start over. And if you really wanna succeed on Etsy, you will think it's worth it to do that. All right, if you have any questions and if you want your shop reviewed on the next video, just put it down below as a comment, your shop name, and we'll check it out for the next one. I definitely wanna do digital shops and handmade shops and then go back and do another round of POD shops. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.